Hello guys, another important topic that you need to consider for a proper whiskey appreciation are the five whiskey production regions. So let me share with you my screen and let's analyze all of the details and the main differences between one region and the other. So first of all, the lowlands. Generally speaking, whiskies from the lowlands, they tend to be lighter and easier to drink than whiskies from other regions. Um, whiskies like Oakintoshin, for example, the Glasgow Distillery Company, the Clydeside Distillery, um, Glen Kinchy, or even Blatnock, they can be a very, very good representation of a lowland whiskey. So what are these main flavors? You might be able to find lots of floral notes, fruity notes, and cereal notes. Um, there's lots of fragrant um, characteristics, some citric characteristics as well, some fresh fruit, cooked fruit, and dried fruit. So remember, very floral, fruity cereal, light, delicate, and short aftertaste. If we go to the north, if we go up north here to the highland region, whiskies from the, from the highlands, they tend to be more powerful and richer than whiskies from the lowlands. Um, and well, as you can see, it's a very vast region with lots of distilleries from south to north. So uh, describe this particular flavor or, or, or whiskies from the highlands. It will be a little bit tricky since there's a wide variety of distilleries and flavors. Um, but basically, uh, if I have to summarize, I would say that whiskies from the highlands, they tend to be richer and much more complex than whiskies from the lowlands. Much more um, a longer aftertaste, for example, mm, some spicy notes, um, a little bit of oaky woodiness, for example, and, and well, definitely more winey uh, flavors as well. This happened because the majority of the distillers in the highlands, they will use a wide variety of casks from different countries. It can be Spain, Portugal, France, Italy, Australia, even Mexico, barrels that produce the hell tequila. So as you can see, there, are, there is a wide variety of different flavors and different characteristics. Let me show you once again the infographic. So whiskies from the highlands, they might be located around this area. They will be whiny and they will be woody. Uh, notes of oily, sherry, nutty, chocolate, new wood, old wood, vanilla and toasted notes uh, are like the main characteristics of these whiskies. So longer aftertaste, more complexity, lots of sherry or winey flavors coming from the, from the wine barrels from different countries, whether in, in, in Europe or in Australia, for example. Um, and yeah, so oily sherry, lots of uh, very oaky as well. Generally speaking, these barrels from Europe, for example, like European oak, it delivers more oakiness, more dryness to the whiskey, a little bit of a spicy characteristic like cinnamon, clove, or um, uh, or pepper, for example, it can be a good, a good description. Um, if we continue the journey, to Speyside, I want to make an emphasis here on Speyside because today, Speyside, it's the world capital of whiskey production. In Scotland, you can find at least 120, 130 distilleries. Only in Speyside, it will be around 50 each distilleries. So, uh, and many of the big names, they usually come from Speyside. Whiskies like Macallan, Glenfiddich, Glenlivet, for example, Glenfarclas, very well-known distilleries, very big distilleries. Um, with worldwide distribution, specifically in the case of Macallan, Glenfiddich and, and Glenlivet, for example. Um, so what's the main flavor profile of whiskies from Speyside? I would say it's a nice combination between whiskies from the lowlands and whiskies from the highlands. So you can find very floral, fruity, cereal, winy and woody whiskies in space it's like a mix of everything definitely not too smoky whiskies there are quite a few exceptions but i wouldn't say it's the rule the rule it's more about floral fruity lots of sweetness like vanilla toffee and caramel for example you might be able to get there and a little bit of oaky and woody characteristics and winey flavors coming from the wine barrels as well um, okay, so let's continue to the west coast of Scotland, where are the other two whiskey production regions. So the other two regions are Isla and Campbellton. Let's focus on Isla first. Um, whiskies from Isla, which I assume you might be able to recognize some of these big names here, like Art Beck, Legabool in the Freud, Bo Moore, uh, or even Kaolila. 
these whiskies are well known for being very smoky and very medicinal. This happened because during the production process they use an extra ingredient which is called peat. Peat, it's like an organic material with thousands of years of natural formations in the lands, in the fields. Um, think about petroleum or oil, but in a solid way. So the distilleries, they get this uh, peat from the land, they burn it at the very beginning of the production process, and all of this smokiness created by the burning peat, it will be absorbed by the grain, and then by the malted barley. And then when you produce whiskey with that particular smoky grain, you might be able to produce a very, very smoky whiskey, which is the case of any of the whiskies in the... Um, in this in this map right now and um, so what are the main characteristics in detail so let me show you once again the infographic so usually whiskies from isla they will be located around this triangle they can be mossy medicinal smoky and capri and particularly whiskies from isla they tend to be very medicinal so you can find um, lots of notes of iodine, carbolic, hospitals, lint, tar, diesel, oil, and seaweed. Very, very medicinal notes. And all of these uh, characteristics, they are coming from the peat, from this uh, in extra ingredient that some distilleries use at the beginning of the, of the production process. Um, okay, so yeah, remember, very medicinal, a little bit coastal, and you know, like salty characteristics, very peaty, and very and very medicinal are the main flavor profile. Um, and well, and the last whiskey production region, the fifth whiskey production region, is this one here, Campbellton, this peninsula. Many many years ago. Campbellton, they used to be the world capital of whiskey production. They used to have more than 30 distilleries, but due to the prohibition in the States during the 1920s to 1933, many of the distilleries in Campbellton, they had to close their doors, and today, sadly, only three distilleries left. However, uh, whiskies from Campbellton, they are pretty much fantastic. Um, so definitely a whiskey that you guys must try. So whiskies like Springbank, Glen Scotia or Glen Gyle, what are the main characteristics of flavor of this whiskey or this region? They tend to be quite rich, very powerful and very very flavorful with very predominant <coughs> with very predominant aftertaste, very long aftertaste. So um, let's check the, um, the the infographic here, the wheel of flavor. Um, whiskies from Campbellton it's a nice combination of, of, of different <clears throat> of different flavors from the wheel. So definitely, well, I would put predominantly they will be located around the, the peaty, the fenty, and sulfury. Um, this sulfury flavor it's acquired during the distillation process. Usually, the pot steel, which is this kind of giant pot that the distilleries use for distillation. Um, in, in Campbellton or in the distillers in Campbellton, it's a very small pot still. So when you distill alcohol in a very small pot still, you might be able to create a much more like sulfuric characteristics in the, um, in the nature of the spirit. So it will be a little bit sulfuric, you know, like sandy beaches, sulfuric, for example. It will be um, a little bit of sweaty notes of tobacco as well. A little bit of uh, medicinal, well, Peaty flavors, however, maybe not very medicinal. It's more like smoky. So peat, bonfires, burnt logs, fire ash, incense, for example, are the main flavors or notes that you will be able to get in, in, in a whiskey from Campbellton. Some other whiskies from the region, they have been matured in, in different wine barrels. So definitely you might be able to get also some winey characteristics as well, like the sherry, the red wine, some dark chocolate, a little bit of nuttiness, like hazelnuts, walnuts, almonds, this kind of flavors, quite dry characteristics, very flavorful, very spicy as well. Um, and with very, very long aftertaste. So this whiskey is from Campbellton. They are quite um, interesting. I wouldn't recommend to drink a whiskey from Campbellton if that's the first single malt ever that you are trying in your life. But if you become a more experienced drinker, a drinker and you start to appreciate all of these complex flavors, it will definitely Campbellton. It's a region that you must explore. 
Um, okay, so well, let's come back here to the map. So according to the Scotch Whiskey Association, these are the five whiskey production regions. So the Lowlands, the Highlands, the Speyside, um, Isla and Campbellton. However, uh, there's like a general belief that there must be or there should be an, uh, an extra whiskey production region, which are all of the Scottish Western Isles in the, in the Western uh, coast of Scotland, starting from Orkney down to Arran. So usually these whiskies from these islands, like for example uh, Locranza or Lac of Isle of Judah or um, uh, Tovermory, for example, um, they belong to the Highland region. Um, and this happened because according to the Scotch Whiskey Association, you need at least three distilleries in the same geographical area. Uh, and well, look what happened here. In, in Orkney, for example, only two distilleries, Highland Park and Scapa. Um, down here in the sky, only two distilleries as well, which is Talisker and Toribac. Uh, down here in Arran, for example, again, only two distilleries, Locranza and Lag. So um, uh, if they manage to build a third distillery or three distilleries in total, well, they will be recognized as an independent whiskey production region. But so far, all of these whiskies from the Scottish uh, Isle, from the Scottish um, Isles in the West Coast, they belong to the Highland region. Um, however, yes, I, I totally agree uh, with the general belief that this whiskey, they must be considered like as a, as a different style of whiskey. But well, so far, this is what we have. And these are the five whiskey production regions. So um, remember, it's a really nice uh, introduction to whiskey to understand the differences in flavor from different regions. So um, it will help you to understand your whiskeys a little bit better. Remember, if you are trying to um, start your journey in the whiskey industry, well, definitely the Lowland whiskey uh, or the Lowland distilleries, it can be a good starting point. If you are looking for something more powerful, flavorful and richer, well, well, definitely whiskies from the Highlands or even Space side as well. Um, if you are a um, peat fan or a smoky whiskey lover, well, definitely whiskies from Isla are the way to go. And, and if you really like a quirky whiskey, like weird whiskey, very rich, very powerful, and, and quirky flavors that you wouldn't find anywhere else, well, Campbelltown, it's definitely the region to go. So this is a um, short and brief summary summary of the, of the five whiskey production regions. And well, see you later.